Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 29, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is an important week without a doubt. At the very beginning of last week, Saturn changed signs, moving into the sign of Aquarius. And almost instantly, even during the buildup, we started to use phrases like social distancing. Aquarius is thought to be an especially social energy, and of course, Saturn representing a sense of restriction would invite us to place restrictions on how connected we are. But at the same time, and if you remember, I spoke of in the Saturn special, how it is that the sign of Aquarius has a very strong dichotomy, and as much as it is about the collective, it is also highly individualistic. And so in social distancing, we are ultimately being asked to find our own space on our own and to be still, to be with ourselves. Connected, yes, but separate. Well, it is going to be this week that that whole understanding, that whole process is going to go up, is going to be accelerated in some way. And that is thanks to Mars. It will be right around Monday that Mars will move into the sign of Aquarius. Now this energy in and of itself, it can heighten the individualistic side, but it does tend to make us more motivated to connect with each other. But then we have the next day, right around Tuesday, Mars will meet Saturn in the sky. And this is one of the more important peak moments as part of the larger Saturn in Aquarius transit. And even though I did speak about this in more detail in the Saturn special horoscope, I do want to touch on a few things quickly now with this aspect, even though I would invite you to watch that or to watch it again. Mars brings heat. Mars acts as an accelerant, and it is going to bring a sense of urgency, if you will, to our need to pay attention to Saturn and Aquarius matters, this idea of being separate, this idea of social distancing. But this is also going to bring a focus on technologies, technologies that ultimately do connect us. How is it that we're going to stay connected to each other? What is the cost of being separate and how much it is that we also have to fight for ensuring that all of us are in some way connected to others? If you think about vulnerable people, right, or people who feel vulnerable even, right, there are practical vulnerabilities certainly, but then there's also that sense of isolation that comes with things like, for example, depression that is only heightened in sometimes and in some ways, quite painful ways for people. And as much as absolutely there are people with other challenges as well that make it so that they have to pay that much more attention to being isolated, there's also this sense that connection, being social, it is such a fundamental part of what it means to be human, such a fundamental part of how it is that we know ourselves to be alive. And the importance of that, that will very likely come into focus now. I do think that Mars meeting Saturn in the sky may also very quickly start to make more people pay attention to or be aware of um, the particular technologies that they are using to be connected to others, uh, where it is that maybe there hasn't been as much focus on things like privacy or user agreements before. Now, very quickly, chances are a lot of people are going to start to talk about this. Where the sign of Aquarius is that much more interested in other people, and it rules things like, for example, CCTV, right? where we monitor the actions of others, we watch what's going on um, using technology. It is also an energy that is hyper interested in privacy. That is part of the dichotomy, the very strong dichotomy that plays out with the energy of Aquarius. And so it is going to be now that this very dichotomy is going to very quickly get our attention. 
This is also an energy of big tech and big technology companies that are ultimately allowing us this wonderful opportunity to stay very connected to each other. But more of us are going to be looking at the subtleties behind that, the depth behind that, and uh, whether or not the companies that we are engaging, how do we really feel about it? Uh, what is the trade-off? These are some things to take into consideration. And again, with Mars, things happen very quickly, but they can also change very quickly as well. So just as quickly as it may be that certain things come into focus, certain privacy agreements perhaps um, that we hadn't realized we were signing up for is just as quickly as we accommodate ourselves to them. Now, further along this theme, there is a very interesting energy that is gonna start playing out this week as well. Right around Friday is when Venus will enter the sign of Gemini and very quickly by the end of the week, reach out and speak in supreme harmony with Saturn in a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. So this is that sense of a very quick resolution to whatever it is that feels like it comes up uh, and seems to uh, be something that gets people riled up. Very quickly, it looks like peace is able to be found. But this is interesting for a few other reasons. Of course, the sign of Gemini is one that speaks to technologies as well, albeit differently. Whereas the sign of Aquarius is technologies that um, connect us or invite us to engage in new ways that we hadn't before. Uh, technologies that are cutting edge, if you will, the next technologies. Gemini is what we use regularly. It's what's a part of our daily life. So, for example, there was a time when the internet was very much a part of Aquarian energy. It was considered the providence of Aquarius. Now, it seems to be much more Gemini. And that is because the internet is so much a part of our world now, part of our daily life. It's a tool that we use more than anything. We've become so accustomed to it. It has changed our lives. And once we get to that point, once we are beyond the novelty of something being new uh, and cutting edge, even revolutionary, once we move beyond that and it becomes a tool that people are using more functionally, more practically, more regularly, it starts, that particular technology starts to move towards the energy of Gemini. Now consider this, at the end of next week, Venus will go into shadow. So that means that the larger Venus retrograde season is right around the corner. Venus will technically go retrograde in May. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way and of course be on the lookout for Venus retrograde special horoscopes. But it's worth mentioning now because the ideas, the topics, um, the ease with which we find ourselves utilizing these different modalities, these different communication modalities, connection modalities, the ease with which they are able to become second nature and a part of us. Well, this is gonna be something that we are looking at again and again, that we're incorporating in deeper and deeper ways in the months ahead. And this is also where some of uh, the limitations of these technologies that have become a part of our daily life are going to start to be revealed. So, of course, I will talk about that. As you know, I've been here, I'm gonna be here. But I did wanna mention now that at least for this week, and at least for as soon as Venus moves into the sign of Gemini and trines Saturn, well, that is an energy that says that most of us are feeling like all is right in our world, that we're able to find a groove, if you will, that we're able to adapt and utilize these technologies more easily. For some, it may be the case that it starts to feel more accessible as well. But in some way, we are honoring this idea of distance, but also um, enjoying the journey of actually being more intimately connected than perhaps we were before. 
But of course there is value in being embodied and being present. And I think that is part of what is going to show itself to us as we start this week. That is when Venus still in its home sign of Taurus will speak in supreme harmony with Pluto. Under normal world circumstances, this is a very sultry energy. It's a very prosperous energy as well, but it is an energy that has us feeling transformed as a result of enjoying the earthly experience, whether that is in love and romance, whether that is with shopping and spending and acquiring things. This energy as well invites us to live more fully and what that means for us, whether that means eating well or uh, socializing. But of course, right about now, there may be some limitations around that. I do think we're going to see people um, not embracing social distancing as much as we start this week. There's going to be such a strong desire for some people to actually have that physical connection, that physical touch to see how it is that it can transform us and change us. Well, that desire is going to be so strong that there may be people who are um, reaching past simply uh, keeping things on a more cerebral, more communication, more technological level. But for all that, I also think that this energy can be one that invites us to truly understand from a place of heart how it is that change can be empowering. And so in its own way, this energy can be one of believing in yourself, of having a healthy sense of self-love that lends itself to contemplating and considering what could transform in your life in a way that is truly meaningful, that reaches to the root of your life and changes it from the inside out. It will also be at the very end of the week that we are going to have a truly beautiful alignment. And this is a meeting in the sky of Mercury and Neptune in the sign of Pisces. And this energy can play out a couple of different ways, okay? So one way, of course, is escapism. So that is something that some of us may need to keep in perspective. But this is energy that is also deeply spiritual, powerfully compassionate, very wise. And so collectively, because Mercury speaks to what we're talking about and in terms of the media as well, we may see some extraordinary examples, celebrated examples of compassion show up at this time. But more personally, this can be a powerful energy to connect to where it is that you are hoping to plug into source, create something that feels divinely inspired, allow your imagination to truly grow and be strong as a force that you can then use either towards creativity or towards envisioning what it is that you hope your future would be like. For some, this can be an energy of miracles, but it can also be an energy of promises as well. But ultimately, what this energy will inspire us to do is to think more spiritually and to act from that place of a profound understanding of the connection that we share. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it is hugely consequential by far. The energy that is the star of the show now is Mars meeting Saturn in the sky. This is an important peak moment as part of this larger transit that's going to take us right into the spring of 2023. Pay attention to what is happening right now because it may be frustrating. It may be challenging for others, though they might find empowerment. But regardless, know that this is where Saturn and Jupiter are going to meet in December of this year. And you and I both know you blink and we will be there. And it is going to be at that time that remarkable turnarounds are possible, that brand new bright beginnings are set to take place for so many of us in different areas of life. But at least for right now, this is where the universe sets the stage. And even if things feel like they become urgent or visceral or on the surface, 
Know that before the week is even over, we are finding peace and ease with what felt so tense earlier in the week. And regardless of how it feels in the immediacy, however urgent it may feel, understand that this energy can also be one powerfully creating awareness, creating space, creating connection, creating desire that we can feel deep within. And it is that desire that ultimately will give way to that true sense of a new chapter, not only individually, but certainly for the collective as well, that is right around the corner. And it is this meeting as well that is going to give us powerful insights into how it is that we could best use this decade ahead. Because it isn't only about Saturn, but it's also about the fact that Pluto is going to start moving over this point in 2023 and 2024. We have got a big decade ahead that is going to put us in a whole other place collectively. It is now that the shift has already begun. And the best part of this shift is that it will give each of us a life that feels more honest and a life that feels more honoring of our most authentic selves. Well, thank you so much for watching. And before I go on, I am gonna do things just a little bit different here. And I am just going to invite you wherever you are in your life right now, I would ask you to please send love and light and your very best energy to my very beautiful friend, Yaves Basamala. Um, he is the artist of the covers of my books. He has been a force of love in the world. And he passed away very recently. And a lot of us in the astrology community right now are very sad and we are mourning his loss. He was known to a lot of us because of his fan art that he started creating some 10 years ago. And he was so generous with it. He would just give it away. And he actually created art of uh, pretty much all the really dominant astrologers around, especially at that time, but even to this day. And he was such a truly loving presence. He was an up and coming renowned Indonesian uh, fashion designer, certainly a respected up and coming astrologer, and also very well known for his art. And in fact, I remember he, before I even knew him, he created fan art for me without me even asking. And at the time I was looking for the cover for my first book. I was trying to figure out what the cover was gonna be. And then he just gifted me this work of art. And I said, that's it, that's gonna be the cover. And then when it came time for my second book and my third book, um, of course he was the one I reached out to because I absolutely loved his art deeply as did so many people. He incorporated color symbolism, astrological symbolism, sacred geometry in what it was that he created. But more than that is how special he was, how a truly lovely soul he was, and how loved. And so a lot of people right now are sad. A lot of people right now are mourning his loss. I am mourning his loss as well. I spoke to him uh, a few days before he passed away, and he didn't tell me how severe it was, but he was in the hospital at the time. We were working together to create the cover of my fourth book, The Universe is Wise and Loving, which is coming out later this year. And he said, you know, Nadia, I'm so sorry. I don't think I'm gonna be able to continue with this project. I just need to spend time focused on my healing. He talked about being in the hospital. He talked about some of the things that were going on with him. And I said, you know what, don't worry about it. Just leave it for now, it'll be there. But you know, of course, you're my guy. You're the one I want. Um, and he uh, just kind of chuckled a little bit and he was like, okay. And I said, okay, don't worry, just give it a few days because it might be good for you to actually start working on this again because I knew how much he loved the work that we did together. And then of course he passed away. And so, Yavis, the world is, I hope, going to always know his love 
Every time I look at the covers of my books, I remember him. And I hope that the covers of my books, they remind you as my friend, my fans and my superstars that no matter how long you live, he was a young man. There's always an opportunity to create something beautiful that is going to be appreciated by someone and especially him, so beautiful inside and out. I'm gonna miss him a lot. And I hope that his energy continues to gain strength in the world. And so, again, just send him your love. That would just mean so much to me, to his family, to all the people in the astrology community who loved him so much. Thank you. Just a couple of very quick announcements. Thank you for making prayers to the sky, number one. Actually, the last communication I had with Yavis, I sent him that image uh, from Amazon uh, saying that this was the number one book in its category. And so he knew that a lot of people were uh, seeing and appreciating his art. And I'm sure, and I know it meant so much to him. I thanked him for being a part of this journey with me. And so this book is on Amazon. It is still like, it has these moments when it's number one, but it's sort of gone back and forth between number one and number two all week. So thank you for that. Thank you for your appreciation of this book. My next book, The Universe is Wise and Loving, uh, is available for pre-advanced sale right now through my website, nadiashaw.com or at theuniverseiswiseandloving.com. If you get the advanced copy through me, there's over $200 of free gifts that you get as well with it. And this book will be available on Amazon um, in August, August 22nd. And I've started working with uh, another brilliant artist that I look forward to sharing with you for the cover uh, of this book. I have a new session of Synchronicity University that was just launched. Uh, I hope you absolutely love it. And so many people are home now and it was asked of me to share this. I have a spring session that is going to be starting April 11th and it includes classes uh, that were asked by you. One class on retrograde planets and astrology, introduction to numerology, uh, a class on Chiron, on Venus and on Mars. So we'll have a wonderful uh, spring session together and of course you can choose your own tuition right to April 10 and there are a limited number of scholarships available as well. I'm so happy I'm able to do that. And so you can log on to synchronicityuniversity.com, learn all about it, sign up for the, uh, the class. And of course, if you need to apply for a partial or full scholarship, you can do that there as well. And finally, astrologyrisingcostarica.com has moved online. And so it will be a wonderful party the first week of May or the beginning of May uh, and truly creating the collective experience online. And Kaipacha truly is a visionary and he has uh, created this incredible program for us to enjoy. I'll be teaching fully four classes, four classes, um, as well as world renowned astrologers who are participating in this Kaipacha. Uh, Rick Levine, Maurice Fernandez, and Timothy Holren, Ari Wolf, uh, Julia Simas, and Christina Claudel. So we've got an incredible cast and crew and people and astrologers sharing their brilliance, affirming love and wisdom in the world. And now you can sign up at astrologyrisingcostarica.com. I will include at the end here a clip uh, of Kaipacha talking about this incredible event and I hope you love that clip and I look forward to meeting you online. I've got lots of online events coming up uh, between now and the middle of June. So I will be busy uh, with you guys and we will stay connected. And thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your trust. It means so much to me. Life is precious. Life is so special. And we're so lucky that we get these moments where we get to put love and wisdom in the world and we get to celebrate love and connection. And I hope that Venus in Gemini reminds us of this, that we can love each other through mind, through communication, through these wonderful tools that we've manifested as humanity, that we can still experience love there. 
And I think that we're learning that right now as a collective. And I think that lesson is going to accelerate that much more. Yaviz, I had the great privilege of meeting him um, because I went to Jakarta. I wanted to meet him. I wanted to connect with him in person. His spirit was that strong. And so I went and he made it an incredible experience for me. I spent almost a week in Jakarta in 2017 and he was a big part of that experience. And there are so many people who loved him and felt his love who didn't actually meet him in person, but it didn't matter. They're still feeling that loss and they are feeling the genuine desire to know that his love lives on, that his love continues to grow. And I think that with Venus and Gemini, we are going to tap into an understanding that through our communication, through the energy we give, these things like the physical presence of where people are, the borders of where things are, they just don't matter when it comes to love. Yes, embodied love in person is wonderful, but love is love and it is powerful and it can be felt in all kinds of ways. And I am a person who believes that love is the only thing that matters. Love is eternal. Love makes us immortal. The love that we give, that is immortality. And what that means is different to everybody. But my hope right now is that that the spirit of Yaviz knows and that his family knows that to many of us, he is immortal. Thank you for being a part of that. And thank you for sending his spirit, your love and light now. Well, thank you for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. Well, I got to say, I'm very sorry about the world situation right now particularly in Costa Rica here, they've closed all the beaches, they've closed the airports. And so Astrology Rising Costa Rica is not going to be happening. I'm very sorry to announce this to everybody. And at the same time, I want to say that we have been working uh, very hard to move this whole event to an online summit. It's going to be May 4th to 10th. It's going to be online. We're going to start out with like yoga in the morning. Okay, I, you know, myself, Maurice, we've got Tantra, we've got Qigong. Then we're going to have talks all day long for six days, uh, ranging from, she's everything. You, you have to see the, you got to see the program. Rick Levine, Nadia Shaw, Maurice Fernandez, myself, the whole dream team. We've got these nine astrologers, 34 talks, virtual dinner parties. <laughs> We're doing everything that we can to bring people together. If we can't do it in flesh and blood, we're going to do it online. We want to create community. We want to learn and understand what this is all about. There's going to be an online forum for question and answers. We'll be on there all week. Okay, there's going to be a Facebook group page where we can all interact, get to know each other. This is going to be a week of astrology, of understanding, of inner work, of healing, of, of everything you can imagine. It's really powerful. Please check out that link below. It's, and, and we made the price like nothing. It's $2.99 for this entire week, okay, of all of us giving talks and getting together. I mean, the, it's, and you can, you can come for just a day. So you might pick out your favorite day if there's a particular talk that you want to hear. It's really going to be something. And I, I wish you the very best, uh, you know, during these times. I hope that you're isolating and staying clean and really uh, making it through, making it through, keeping the spirits up. Because uh, this is a, actually a time of going inward and getting strong and getting centered because our work is about to begin. I hope to see you or hear from you online. 
Namaste. Aloha. So much love. Thank you.